Great Lakes Prepping here. Recently, I became interested in the idea of figuring out how to build a simple water pump out of easy to find materials or even materials that I mostly already have laying around the house, the workshop, the garage, whatever. So after reading a bit and looking at a few examples online of simple pumps that other people have made, I came up with this really quite simple pump made out of uh, all PVC pipes and PVC fittings and just a couple other little parts. And in this video, I want to walk you through how I put this thing together and show you how it works and share some of the things that I learned um, along the way. Now, right off the bat, I'll mention that I haven't actually glued any of these pieces together because I wanted to be able to take it apart somewhat to show you how it all goes together. So the first thing I'll do is just kind of pull apart the main components. And there we have it. Now, as you can see, this is almost entirely just put together with PVC pipe and PVC fittings. But I'll mention that I did have to sort of uh, fabricate a couple of parts of this in order to make it work. And those parts are this one and this one. Now we'll talk about this piece first. The main housing of the pump needs to allow water to fill it when you pull the pump out and then push the water back out when you push the plunger back in. But as you push it in, we need to redirect that water somewhere else. So it all starts with something that's essentially a very simple check valve. Now you can see we're using one and a half inch PVC pipe for the pump housing or the body. So what I decided to use to kind of build my little check valve here uh, is a plug that actually requires this coupler piece to fit on. So it goes like that. Now, when you pull the pump plunger out, this needs to allow water to go in. But since we want the water to come back out from this sort of spout here, when we push the plunger in, we no longer can allow the water to move through this sort of opening. So what we've got here is a sort of rubber seal that can only allow water to move one direction. And this is actually the only rubber piece in the whole pump, the way that I've built this. And what we have here is, like I said, this uh, plug. And I've drilled a bunch of big sort of well, medium-sized holes in the bottom here. And I'll say my uh, drill bit kind of snagged and, and chewed it up a little bit here. But it doesn't matter. It's still serving its purpose. And then we drilled a smaller hole right in the middle. And through that is just a small bolt with a nut and that holds that rubber gasket in place. So when you pull the plunger out and water needs to rush in, the force of the water and the suction motion uh, push this rubber seal out of the way and allow the water to come in. But when we push the other way on the plunger, we're pushing water against this. And as you can see, that seal can't move in the other direction. And this little rubber seal, by the way, was super easy to make. All you need is an old bicycle tire inner tube. And I'll be honest, that's actually the only thing that I had to buy for this entire build. I've got a giant uh, sort of bin full of old PVC parts and lots of scrap PVC pipe laying around. And I actually kind of let the parts that I had dictate how I built this thing. But I don't have a bicycle and I don't have any old inner tubes laying around. So I ended up just buying sort of the cheapest one I could find because all I'm going to do is start cutting it up with scissors. I think I spent about $6 on an inner tube at the store. Uh, maybe they're cheaper because it's winter. I don't know. Basically, that meant that this entire build uh, for me was about $6. But you might have an old inner tube laying around, so it might not even be that. So since we're talking about the pump housing, uh, let's take a look at these parts. So, you know, like I said, I kind of let my available parts dictate how I built this. I had a scrap of this one and a half inch PVC pipe about that long. So that's, uh, you know, kind of what made me decide how long to make this thing. Uh, I cut off about, uh, we'll say mm, eight inches or so off of one end. 
So we can put our little uh, splitter here, our T-splitter, and then put it together like that. So of course this is the top of the pump, this is the bottom, and to the bottom we'll add this coupler and our little bottom uh, check valve thingy. And that's it, that's, that's all we need to do for the pump housing. Now we need to talk about the plunger, and this is really where uh, the other half of our mm, quote magic happens. Mostly, this is just uh, serving as a handle. This is serving as kind of the, uh, the, 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 the conduit, pun intended, uh, for which this contraption right here needs to be attached. And what this is gonna do is allow it to pull water in when we draw the plunger back and then let the water pass by it and fill up the tube around it when we push it back in. And the reason that we need it to, to act this way is because when we pull it in, we want there to be a good vacuum so it will suck water in. But when we push this back out, we need that water to be able to come through the end of this and fill around it so as we push, the water displaces this way and comes out of our spout. If we didn't do that, we would just be trying to push water back down into the bottom, which of course it can't really go anywhere because of that rubber gasket check valve. So I actually got the idea for how to put this component together from another YouTuber. And uh, you know, in the name of giving credit where credit is due, uh, check out the video description and see a link to uh, his channel. He's got some cool stuff and uh, I really liked the way that he put together this uh, this part of the pump. And I honestly don't know if he came up with this or if he got uh, inspiration from elsewhere. I don't know. All I know is that uh, the first place I've ever seen it was from his video. So, you know, check out the link in the description and give his channel a look. He's got uh, a lot of interesting stuff on there. Now let's real quick walk through kind of what's going on with this component. Uh, firstly, um, we've got this uh, cap. It's just a cap for the three quarter inch tubing that we're using as our plunger. And its only uh, purpose is to hold uh, this component onto the plunger handle. Now let's look over here at the other end. Uh, I, I kind of had to fabricate this piece uh, out of a different PVC fitting. And I actually used a plug for a one inch PVC pipe because uh, as you can see here, the wide end of this actually uh, almost fits right into the pump housing and that's what we want. We want that to be a, a pretty close fit and this was a fitting that just happened to uh, do that but on the wide end, not even actually the, the ordinarily useful end. The first thing I did was actually uh, sand this uh, so it would be um, circular rather than this uh, I don't know, what is that, a, a hexagon? Whatever that shape is. I wanted this to be smooth so it would actually fit down the uh, pump housing. And then the next thing I did was drilled uh, a bunch of holes in it, some bigger ones kind of around the outside, and then uh, one down the middle that would fit uh, my bolt diameter. I didn't need to use a lag bolt. In fact, that's actually kind of a clunky bolt to use for this, but it's what I had. So that's what I used and it's working fine, but you could use a more regular uh, bolt for this if that's what you had laying around. But it's important that it's threaded all the way from top to bottom. Obviously you also don't need to go as long, but again, that's just what I had and it's not hurting anything by being this long. So after sanding this fitting to be round and drilling these holes around the outside and the one in the middle, uh, the next thing I did was use a hacksaw and just cut off uh, the tube part of this because actually I don't need it and it's just kind of getting in the way. All I really needed was this uh, flat but sort of rigid sturdy piece of plastic here. So as you can see here using an ordinary nut I attached uh, this plastic disc to the leg bolt all the way up by the head and then I added a, another nut here to act as a spacer and over top of that I've got a big washer and this washer is something you may end up needing to buy because you need a particular size. You need a washer that's uh, as big around as the whole sort of circumference of the plastic disc, but it also has to have a hole in the middle that's big enough to set right over top uh, of, the, of the nut. 
And the reason for that is this piece needs to be able to move. We want this thing to uh, float, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, next, we've got another washer that's just a little bit narrower, and it does not have the great big hole in the middle because it just is going to be uh, fixed with, of course, a third nut. And then just to have a little space for me to work with, it wasn't really necessary, but I added uh, a fourth nut on top of that. Again, just a spacer. And then uh, with a hole drilled into my end cap piece here, one more final nut uh, down in here to hold the whole thing in place. Now let me explain why this floating piece is so important. Uh, much like how we needed this check valve to allow water to only go one way, uh, we need something that serves a similar purpose. Now, if you can imagine, when pulling the plunger out, we're drawing water into the housing of the pump. And with that sort of suction, this larger washer is going to be sort of pulled downward such that it's completely blocking all of these holes that I drilled. And that's where our vacuum and our suction is coming from. If this wasn't here and these holes were just exposed, we wouldn't be getting a good vacuum because all the air would just blast right through uh, these holes. But with this washer in place, it creates a seal or at least a good enough seal that allows for that vacuum. Then when we want to push the water such that it comes out of our spout, uh, we can't have those holes blocked because now we need to allow that water uh, to get from beneath the plunger to above the plunger. And it has to go somewhere. Some of it will come, you know, leak from around the uh, the the plate here. This isn't a high precision, uh, you know, contraption here, but uh, not enough. And again, you're basically just going to be trying to push water back out this direction. And we don't want that. As we push the plunger down, the water is going to push through all these little holes and come around this narrower tube, and again, displace and come out of our spout. So I saw a lot of different designs for this part of the pump. And you know, some of them were a lot more elaborate. Uh, some were much simpler and I tried them and they did not work. They just absolutely did not work. So I gave this one a shot thinking, uh, you know, it seemed a little too simple. And, and once I put it all together and, and realized just quite how it worked, I realized that it's sort of ingenious the way it's working here. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I gave this one a try and I'm really happy with how it came out. So now that I've kind of explained the functions of these pieces, uh, obviously this plunger just goes down into the housing. And then because we don't want to just try uh, hanging on to this little piece of the uh, three quarter inch tubing, and we'll make ourselves a little handle out of a, out of a T fitting. And I guess that would be fine all on its own, but I had these couple little scraps of the three quarter inch tubing. So we'll just put those in there. And now we've got a decent little handle to work with. So I'll do a little demonstration with this uh, five gallon bucket full of water that's sitting in my uh, unnecessarily disgusting laundry tub. As we pull this in, we might need to give it a couple of pumps just to kind of prime it. As we pull that plunger out, the housing is filling with water. And as we push the plunger back down, it's displacing and coming out of the spout on the side. And because, as I said, I've already got some pieces lying around, um, I'll do a couple of uh, little add-on features. Basically, I want to narrow up this spout a little bit, so I'll use this reducer. And then uh, we can have uh, it come out with a little more force since it's been uh, reduced like this. Uh, but then let, I can take it a step further. And I've got these little fittings that you can attach to a garden hose. So if I was to use this little coupler, and then of course the hose fitting, I could attach uh, a garden hose to this. So if I need to move water from here to somewhere several feet away, and not just from uh, here to another bucket, now I can do that with, with the garden hose fitting. And let's just see if I can do this with only two hands and, and keep the ends of this hose still in the video frame. As 
So yeah, not bad, not bad at all. It's it's of course not the fastest pump, but in absence of an electric pump or even a better store-bought manual pump, this thing is serving its purpose, and I'm I'm actually really kind of happy to have this on hand now. And to give you a quick idea of uh, you know how well this bottom uh, check valve is working, right now the housing is completely filled with water. And if I was to remove the plunger and tip this whole thing upside down, you can see that whole thing was filled up with water that was just ready to waiting to get pumped back out. So yeah, there's a lot of different designs out there for simple pumps made from PVC pieces. And this is the way that I've done it. And I gotta say, I'm really quite happy with it. Uh, of course, I could make this at a much larger scale uh, to move more water more quickly. Uh, but this certainly proves the concept. And uh, after I let everything dry out, now that the video has been shot, I'll probably go ahead and use some PVC cement to put together some of these pieces. Uh, maybe not all of them, so I can still kind of disassemble this thing if it needs to be cleaned or maintained, but uh, honestly, it's probably not even necessary as long as I don't go crazy uh, pumping way too fast uh, and, and blow the you know fittings out of one of these ends just from the pressure. I think it'd work just fine the way it is. So that's about it. That's my PVC manual hand water pump. Be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all our latest stuff, including future DIY contraption videos. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Great Lakes Prepping. Thank <laughs> you.